In this video, we're going to look at Conway's game of life and how to build it in processing. So for this exercise, uh, we're going to be looking at a two-dimensional cell automata and using adjacency rules for each cell. So there are four different rules for Conway's game of life. You can actually check its Wikipedia page to learn more about these. So um, basically, each cell in cell automata grid is governed by its adjacency of uh, alive and dead neighbors. And these affect how the population proceed to the next generation and it uh, makes it kind of an animation as you see here. So there are different types of species uh, that could be called as oscillators, spaceships, uh, and still lives. So basically still lives do not change. Oscillators alternate between fixed stages and spaceships actually move through the space. And these are all generated by cellular interaction and depending on neighborhoods. So for each cell we are actually looking at its eight neighbors and depending on the amount of active or dead neighbors we determine the um, determine the future of the cell so the next generation is updated accordingly. And this behavior, this simulation gives you a lot of interesting uh, complex behavior. So um, there's also something called uh, Turing machines, which you can set with uh, gliders and uh, these uh, oscillators and still lives. So basically you can actually compute uh, a lot of complexity with this type of cellular interaction. Um, so I already built the code here and what I'm going to do is show you what we will be building uh, as part of this exercise. So we're going to generate a random grid of cells and when we update it, we're going to get uh, Conway's game of life behavior. So you're seeing actually a lot of movement and complexity happening and gliders and oscillators are kind of shifting and hitting boundaries and changing them as well. So I'm going to start by creating a new sketch and uh, something different than uh, one-dimensional zero automata in this exercise we'll be dealing with um, a double array so um, basically uh, we're going to start by the term um, defining our zero automata as a double array uh, in in the format so we have two brackets now so one for X and one for Y dimensions and I'm going to define a dimension for my zero automata cells which is going to be five and then I'm going to size, uh, de define an array size so that we can make computation a lot faster. So I'm going to just define it as a variable. So let's start with our void setup. So my sketch is going to have a dimension of 800 by 800. So I'm going to type in size. 800 by 800 and then my array size the variable that we just defined is going to be um, we can actually type in width divided by dimension um, I'm calling this as a name you can actually call it AS short for uh, array size so that we can save some space as well and we're going to use it to uh, compute adjacencies and neighbors uh, a lot faster. So I'm, I'm going to define uh, my double array now, initialize it in the following format. And then I'm going to call a reset function, which is going to randomize, randomize cells. So let's go to our uh, reset function. So my reset function is void reset and it's going to take my double array. So the way I'm going to do it is for int i equals zero, i smaller than as and I plus plus and since it's a double array we're going to define a J parameter as well go zero 
j smaller than as j plus plus and I'm going to just turn on a random variable so if random smaller than 0 0.5 so if there's a 50% chance basically C A I J is going to be false or we can type in uh, true as well doesn't matter and else we want it to be true so this is going to be uh, basically end of reset so how we initialize our uh, our list then the next thing we want to do is uh, draw our um, our basically the list so we want to to void draw since this is going to be a simulation I want to draw them simultaneously in the draw function so first uh, let's type in our background color is uh, 255 then I want to make a copy of this because we're going to go through all the cells in CA and look for the state of the CA so if CA I J what I'm doing here is I'm going through all the cells in the X and the Y direction so if I have uh, let's say if this is 20 I have 40 by 40 1600 cells I first go in the X direction and then I increment J going into the um, Y direction so that we can check for the state of 1600 cells and if the cell is active I want to uh, draw it as black stroke as zero as well else we want to do no fill and no stroke and here I want to draw my rectangle I times dimension J times dimension and dimension minus 1 and dimension minus 1 so the I and J define the coordinate of the cell and I'm multiplying it with dimension to get to the uh, right pixels and then I'm drawing a rectangle using the um, using this uh, parameter here now um, we're going to reset it and we're going to keep drawing it so let's run our function and you can see that it's already giving me kind of randomized uh, kind of a picture that is randomized right so if I change the dimension to 10 and run this we're going to have uh, more random state cells and if I also decrease this percentage let's say um, we want more false cells this is going to look a lot sparse right so um, basically this random uh, coefficient if you keep it at 0 0.5 you get uh, closer to 50 percent distribution um, whereas if you increase it I get more false cells so it will be more of a wider picture now what I want to do is uh, find a way of updating uh, this list um, so we can basically do um, I want to first define the frame uh, frame rate which is going to be uh, let's say 5 5 is actually going to be fast let's call it 24 and inside of draw I want to call an update function every time uh, we draw the screen and let's define our update function void update so inside of update what I want to do is define a new boolean list so this is again going to be a new double list new 
uh, or CA new equals new boolean AS and AS for array size. And I want to copy this uh, double for loop. So uh, inside of this list for each cell, what I want to do is check for neighborhood. So active neighbors. So neighbor count equals check neighbors i and j so i need to define a new function now so we can also call it um, count and i need to define this function so that function is going to return an integer and it's going to have uh, two inputs one for x and one for y so inside of it i'm going to have int i and int j as my inputs and what I want to do is keep a count of the active neighbors. So initially they're going to be zero, but I want to check all of my neighbors. So how do I do that? We can simply start checking for, let's say the left top. And the way I check it is by um, specifying the X coordinate to be minus one plus AS and mod as this is going to look a bit uh, confusing in the beginning but the more you do it the easier it will get so this is uh, basically the same y uh, but i'm checking for my left neighbor so if this uh, statement is met so if i'm uh, let's see i closed j i closed i this one um, let's see mod okay this is correct and I can do count plus plus so this is basically checking for my left so I just decreased uh, the I which is the X location and at the end I'm going to return count because it wants um, it's giving me kind of an error because it we need to return something at the end now let's check for um, let's check for uh, left bottom, and the way I'm going to do that is by copying this line. So this is already going to the left, and I also go uh, to the bottom. So the way I do that is by typing something similar here: minus one plus a size array size mod mod array size so this is left bottom and I'm going to make a copy and I'll just change this to be delete these j plus one mod array size so this will be left top so left top corner basically let's check for the top cell so the top cell is going to be at the same I location so I don't need anything else here and we want J to be plus one mod AS so this will be uh, our top let's check for the bottom so for the bottom I need it to be um, basically the same as this function here so I can simply copy it and paste it inside the brackets here. So J minus one is going to decrease our Y value. And these are checking um, for the edges of the, uh, of the screen basically. So if I'm at the bottom most cell, I'm going to check for the top one. So let's go to the right cell. Uh, for that one, I'm going to copy, let's say this line and this one is actually pretty straightforward as well we just at plus one and mod as so this is going to be the right and then here i'm going to uh, be adding 
th this is going to be the same. Um, whereas if I subtract one, which is here, and this is going to be uh, right bottom, and we need one more for right top, which is going to be J plus one mod AS. So this is right top. So this will check all of my eight neighbors, which we call as the Moore neighborhood. You can look that up and uh, it's going to return a value. So if all of my eight neighbors are active, then this value is going to be eight. So I'm going to be returning a value of eight. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we need to use it to update uh, the current state of the cell. So after I get the count, um, I'm basically going to check if uh, first the current state is active. So if my cell is alive, so this is my cell is alive. So inside I'm going to do something or check for some rules else my cell is dead. So I'm going to be checking for other stuff. So if my cell is active, let's see if count is less than two, which is basically the Conway's Game of Life principle, the cellular automata basically dies, the cell dies uh, from underpopulation. So it will be, the next generation will be false. If the count value equals to two or we can um, basically, or count is three. If it's two or three, then the new cell is true. So it, the cell basically survives to the next generation. And if it's over um, more than three, then it dies as well for overpopulation. So it's basically kind of um, like a survival. And if the cell is dead, and if we have exactly three neighbors alive, then our next generation, the cell becomes true as well. And at the end of this update, what I have to do is override the CA with CA new. So that's uh, basically it. So what I'm doing is every time I call this uh, simulation, I'm visualizing the current uh, cells using rectangles and I'm updating for the next generation as well. So when I do update, what happens is for each cell, I'm checking for their neighbor count. And if the cell is active or alive, if it has less than two neighbors, it dies for underpopulation. If it has exactly two or three neighbors, it survives. If it has more than three neighbors, it dies from overpopulation. And if the cell is dead, then if I have exactly three active neighbors, it becomes alive as well. So then I update the new list and override the old one so that that will be visualized. And this is the check neighbors function. As I said, I'm checking for eight of my neighbors and the way I find them, their placement is uh, as such. And this simply generates our first random list of values. So when I run my simulation, now you're seeing it in action. So I can control the frame rate. If I make this smaller, then the simulation is going to uh, run a bit slower. And you're also seeing some of this flicker behavior that I showed you on Wikipedia, basically. Um, these are alternating between two stages and we also get some gliders moving around. And I can also add some more functionality. For instance, I can, uh, I don't have to start with a reset. I can, uh, I don't have to call this function so I can just comment it out. So uh, double slash basically comments it out. And I can simply type in a mouse function here. So void mouse pressed. 
So let's say we want to input where our active cells are going to be. And I can say CA, open brackets, mouse X divided by dimension is uh, basically the X coordinate for where I press on the screen, and mouse Y divided by dimension. So that's uh, where I click on the screen and I want that state to be switched. So if this is false, it's going to become true. So we can actually visualize it. Uh, I'm going to leave this on for you to copy. So every time I click on the screen, I'm going to convert it to the location of my cell. So when I run this, now because we, didn't, we don't have reset, I can actually place where I want the cells to be, uh, but basically update immediately kills these states, right? So I cannot, um, I cannot update them here. So what I need to do is um, trigger update. So for instance, I can call a Boolean active function here equals false. And here, if active, we can run if active, we can run the update. And to trigger update, we can do void key pressed. And if I press any keys, active equals not active. All right, so if I press any keys, we're going to trigger updating. But before doing that, I can simply input some cells. So let's say I define some configuration in the middle like this. And then I hit my spacebar and my simulation starts running and you're seeing a lot of activity behavior and it's basically interacting and I can keep inputting but I basically need to stop the simulation and I can input a bit more and keep running the simulation. So that will be Conway's Game of Life and you can control it with uh, keys to run the simulation and you can also input where you want the cells to be. You can also uh, randomize the inputs and you can generate all the uh, cool images with this.